partying, forging careers, exploring their sexuality. It could describe any young person. But the characters in acclaimed film Dog Sweat have attracted particular attention because they're living in Iran, brought up under strict religious law. So Dog Sweat is uh, basically moonshine, it's homemade alcohol. And as you know, alcohol in Iran is prohibited. And so uh, the movie is about uh, young people in Iran who want to uh, basically are fighting to be free and live the way they want to. And uh, in one of the stories, uh, a bunch of guys, uh, you know, want to track down some alcohol, some dog sweat. And um, so the, the film in itself is, is uh, different stories of people looking for their own version of dog sweat, whether it's, uh, you know, a female singer who wants to be heard or a young couple that uh, just wants to find a place where they could be alone together. It's a rare view of Iran. Keshava's painting a portrait of a mounting underground rebellion. How mm. widespread are all of these taboos, do you think? Or did you find very unusual cases and you're highlighting them? For me, uh, I wanted to show kind of everyday life in Iran and I wanted to make a portrait of this generation. So I don't think uh, any of these stories are kind of uh, unusual, but I think um, they haven't been seen before. And I think the reason why they haven't been seen is because we have a uh, very, I would say we have um, kind of a skewed, uh, we get skewed images of Iran. Um, in Western media, which it's always about Iran as a threat, uh, you know, Iran as a country of fundamentalists. And in Iranian media, Iranian films, it's often because of censorship, you know, it's about to idealize a uh, family or it's films that are kind of, exotic, you know, films about, you know, happening in faraway villages. But the, the truth is that, you know, Iran is mostly urban and two-thirds of the people live in, uh, two-thirds of the people are under 35 years old. And so um, there, I felt like there wasn't really anything that kind of evoked the experience of, of living in Iran and the experience of, of young people. So that's why I wanted to make this film because, you know, Tehran's a city of 20 million people. And, you know, it's, it's a crazy city and there's so much energy. And, um, you know, I feel like coming back to New York, I feel like New York is such a tranquil place compared to Tehran. But just as the young people depicted in Dog Sweat are forced to pursue their desires and dreams underground, so too the film was shot in Iran amid great secrecy and at great risk. Uh, presumably the authorities uh, wouldn't have allowed this. They wouldn't have given you a permit to film this stuff. So how did you get away with it? Mm -hmm. the, the thing is, so we shot this before the elections, and so I think, you know, the situation has changed so much since the elections um, that, you know, I don't think we, it would be possible to even get anything, get, even get a scene now, because, you know, if you take a camera out now, then they're going to really be very suspicious. Iran has recently detained several filmmakers, the most prominent being Jafar Panahi, who has publicly supported the opposition Green Movement. The award-winning director is facing a six-year jail term and has been banned from making films for 20 years. You know, I just want to say that I think he's a fantastic filmmaker. And, you know, I think it's, it's always sad when, um, you know, someone's put in jail for, something, for a film they make or for, a, you know, a book they write or for a speech they make. And, um, you know, I think this is a problem uh, not just in Iran, but in a lot of places in the world. And, you know, I think people don't realize how critical free speech is. And it's not just a Western value. I think it's something that is really critical around the world uh, because in order to progress as a culture, you need to foster an exchange of ideas. And the way you do that is by being able to uh, speak freely and express yourself. In Iran, at least, Kashafaz believes those freedoms will come. As I mentioned before, two thirds of the people in Iran are, are young people. So I think just demographically, it's inevitable that change will happen. And, and I think change is happening. A lot of stuff is happening kind of in a, in a perceptible a way. But I think uh, things have changed so much since two or three years ago. And so the, I think the question is, is you know, how, how is this, what shape is this going to take? Because, you know, uh, young people are, are uh, you know, increasingly going to be in positions of power. And so hopefully that change could happen in a peaceful way. But I think everyone does want change. Do you think that change um, should happen slowly and organically? Or do you think there should be some sort of international uh, intervention? What do you think yeah. is the solution? What, uh, from your experience, how should change come about? <laughs> I think change has to kind of come within 
uh, the people, and I, I think the people are pushing for change. Um, but this, um, you know, this idea that you know you can, you know, you can you could do it militarily, I think, has kind of been debunked through what's happened in Iraq. Um, and you know, hopefully, with 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 my film, uh, you know, hopefully we can kind of promote this idea of of, of kind of what the young people want in Iran. Um, and I think it's always easier to kind of think of a military solution where you actually don't realize that these are people just uh, who have the same aspirations, uh, fall in love, fall out of love, try to get a good job, a good career, um, the same aspirations that people do anywhere.